NCAA Basketball Championships on GPTV. Welcome back to the High School Championships live on GPTV. I'm Dave Garner along with Phil Hanson. We're joining you from the Macon Centerplex. It's the Class AA Girls Championship. Again, we welcome back our audience. And again, Phil, we got an exciting game going on here in the Class AA Championship. Putnam County and Fannin County, two teams that are no strangers to championship games. Yes, sir, Dave. Well, partner, it's great to be back with you this year. And you get it, this game is held pretty close to script. You've got both teams trying to impose their will upon each other. Putnam trying to run up and down, get them in a helter-skelter game for Fannin County is trying to be methodical, pick you apart, run some down screens, some cross screens, and bang it inside and use that precision high-low inside game. As you get a look at the score, 15 to 8 as we're nearing the completion of the first quarter here. And again, there is the starting lineup for the Putnam County War Eagles. Waller and Tarpkins, the forwards, Reed at the post inside, and Andrews and Andrews, that is Erica and Tamika, both sisters, at the guards. Outstanding dynamic duel inside for Putnam County. Nice pass. County right back on the attack there. Grice goes up. She's fouled underneath. That's a nice pass by Paris. Grice has got to catch that ball. Don't be in a hurry in the post. Catch it and go up strong. There's the, there you get a look at the lineup of the Fannin County Lady Rebels of Blue Ridge, Georgia. Paris and Flowers. Grice in the middle and Nelson and Reed at the guards. Putnam has been unable to get into their press due to the fact that they haven't been able to convert on the offensive end. Gina Grice hits the first one there. She's averaging... 16 points a game with nine rebounds, and she has five in this one. She banged the heck out of the glass against Dodge County in the semifinal game. Bryce with both that time, 17 to 10. The Lady Rebels extend their lead to seven, and now a little bit of a trap there momentarily. A little one-two, one-one press there. That's a different wrinkle because that's the same press that Putnam likes to use, and usually teams that like to up-tempo and press do not like to have that reciprocated. Turnover there, and the Lady Rebels will have the ball with 32 seconds. And counting here in the opening quarter of play. Watch Fannin County. They're going to run the flex offense. You're going to have a cross screen and a down screen on the same side of the floor. Here's the cross screen. Now here comes the down screen. Looking inside that time. That's Paris with the ball. We'll kick it back out, and they'll go back up top. That's Leah Nelson with the basketball for Fannin County. Here comes the down screen. We're going to reverse the ball. Nelson looking to do something with it. He gives it to Roxy Reed. Reed nice pass. Inside. Oh, great pass. Up and in and a foul. Well, that's the worst thing you wanted to happen right before the quarter break. Stacy Paris with seven points in the ball game, and she'll have a chance for a three-point play. There's a look at the replay. Great vision by Roxy Reed. Great vision. Now, again, with that flex offense, they're going to have a cross screen and a down screen on the same side of the floor away from the ball. The way you want to defense that is you want to switch on all screens and make it impossible or very or make it tough for them to reverse the ball to get the thing to roll back on the other side. A three-point opportunity missed that time as Cassandra Andrews checks into the game for Chantel Reed of Putnam County. And it looks like we're going to have a timeout on the floor. Let's go ahead and take a timeout and be right back from the Class AA Girls Championship here at the Macon Centerplex. Team to 10 our score as we open up the second quarter of play. Let's throw it down courtside to Lisa Weiss. Now all Fannin County starters are seniors and over the past four years they've won 102 games. They've won three region titles and were state runners up. The only thing left for them to do is win a state championship. There you have it. Thanks, Lisa. Again, Phil, we're talking about Stacy Paris at the break, averaging 18 points a ball game. She's got 10 tonight. She's on track for more. She's playing really well. Every, usually every game, she draws the toughest offensive player on the defense end of the floor, and that expends a lot of energy. But tonight, she's got her offensive A game on, and she's being a double threat offensively and defensively. Stacy Paris causing a turnover there for Fannin County. She got tied up with Tamika Andrews, and now the Lady Rebels have the basketball back once again. That's Roxy Reed with it outside. Roxy Reed has got great floor vision. She's the consummate point guard. Pass first, score second. Get everybody involved. Bryce look inside. They're a little too strong. They kicked it back out now. Bryce back with the basketball for the Lady Rebels of Fannin County. Fannin County is very patient and very well coached. In Fannin County, of course, located in the Blue Ridge Mountains of Georgia. A shot that time by Leah Nelson. A little off the mark that time. It'll stay out of bounds. It'll stay with Fannin County. In that flex offense, Dave, you're going to get the elbow jumpers or that layup right at the blocks. Those are the two spots you're going to get your shot. Eaton 10, the home of Putnam County High School. About 50 miles northeast of 
Macon, and there's a three-point shot by Stacy Paris. Putnam County's going to have to locate her every time down the floor. She's got her shooting game on, and they're going to have to do something, make her floor it, or do something to sit standing out there shooting wide-open jumpers and getting her feet set. Get to run at her. Putnam County wants to talk things over. They call it 20-second timeout. And you're going to look at Coach Crystal Wood in her first year at Putnam County. Came from Social Circle, school record of 20 and 7, a career record of 76 and 56. Does a nice job. You get a look at Coach Johnny Farmer of Fannett County, 19th season with the Lady Rebels, a school record of 101 and 9. Unbelievable, Phil. This guy is uh, the modern day John Wooden of <laughs> women's basketball. He is unbelievable. I tell you what, he has been something else. Again, 22 to 10, our score as the Lady Rebels lead it by 12 here with seven minutes to play in the first half. Putnam's running a three out, two in, pass and screen away. Lady Warriors with the basketball will drive and shoot a little off the mark that time. Some contact and the foul will be called that time on number 12, Sharika Tarpkins. Putnam needs to be a little more patient on the offensive end of the floor. Don't try to take the first quick shot that you get. Let's work the ball around. Let's throw it inside, skip it opposite, get a couple ball reversals and let's get a few passes and some screens and get our inside people involved. And Phil, despite the uh, despite the score, Putnam County, of course, out-rebounding fan, as you get a look at that, eight to four. Here's this flex cut again. Now you wanna, you wanna deny that reversal so the ball stays on one side of the floor. There you go, then you get a three seconds count because everyone's quick stops moving. Turnover, turnover that time by the Lady Rebels, so Putnam County will inbound. Again, the Lady Warriors last year's Class A champ jumping up into classification in the A this year. The drive that time, a nice job, but follows the shot. Oh, still can't get it to go. Fighting for it down there, and we got a jump ball call. Putnam County, this seems to be like a lid on that basket. Unfortunately, they're not able to convert on the offensive end, so they're not able to get into their defensive pressure. Let's take a look at the replay. She takes the glass strong, and everyone goes up there to try to grab it and, and take it to the basket. Way to pound the glass. If you want to win a ring, you've got to control the boards. The War Eagles with the shot. What a jumper that time by number 24, Erica Andrews. That's and her fourth point. Nice job of keeping that ball above her head. So now it's a 22 to 12 ball game. Back to a 10 point game. Lady Rebels still on top with six minutes here in the first half. Now from outside. And what a shot that time by Eric, by, uh, excuse me, Cindy Williams. Number 24. Fans does a nice job of knowing everybody's role on this team. Everyone plays within the system. Cindy Williams, a 5'9 junior for the Lady Rebs. Now shot on the other end a little too strong that time. Rebound, Lady Rebels, and they'll clear it out of there. They'll push across midcourt. Nice pass. What a kick in the head. Williams, once again, will kick it back outside for Paris. Three! That's a super job of inside-outside. She kicked it ahead. They threw it inside. They skipped it back out, and she was able to hit the three. 27-12, Fannin County on top with 5-19 remaining, and now Putnam back on the other end a little too strong that time. And the Lady Rebels will get it out of there. Last shot by Kashina Reed. It wouldn't quite go, though. Fannin County is doing a nice job of controlling the tempo of this ball game. Good flash. Fannin County looking inside. Leah Nelson up and in. Oh, you got to love that bank shot, Dave. <laughs> I don't know if you got to call those in championship play or not. That was nice. <laughs> she squared up and hit that one nice. Putnam County kind of falling into a hole here early on in this first half. They'll try to cut in that lead. Just be patient. Good skip. Now it's reverse it. There you go. Flash. Ah, it's okay. Oh. That time Eric Andrews lost the handle on that one. And now Roxy Reed will push for Fannin County. So step it back out. It's a nice there. Catch. Oh, inside the Grice. Tina Grice has got super hands. That was a great, great catch. Six points tonight for Tina Grice in the early going. And it's a 31 to 12 game. Putnam can't get in a trap where they're going to try to score 10 points with one possession. They just have to be patient, run their offense, and get some touches inside to their big people. Now Sharika Tarpkins with the basketball outside, averaging 16 points a ball game throughout the season. Now driving inside, won't quite go that time for Kashina Reed, but there's a foul underneath. Even though Putnam did not convert on that play, Dave, I like the dribble penetration where it, where it drew, drew him up. This is outstanding inside-outside action coming right at you here, folks. Throw it right in there, catch it, high-low in action. She caught it, beautiful catch, and laid it right in off the square. Chantel Reed will check back in for Putnam County, and the Lady Rebels will have the basketball. Four minutes as you get a look at it there. 
Remaining in this second quarter of play from the Macon Centerplex in Macon, Georgia. Dave Garner along with Phil Hansen bringing you the action from the Class AA Girls Championship. And now a three-point shot, but outside is good that time by Melissa Flowers. Everything's clicking now. A little screen for the screener there. Roll off that high screen and nail that three. What you want to do there, if you're defensively putting them, if you want to go over the top of that screen. Here it comes again. Here it comes right off that screen. Now, you've got to slip that screen. If somebody's a very good shooter, you don't want to play behind that screen. You want to go over the top of that to bump them out. Putnam County with the basketball looking inside. That's Tamika Andrews with the dribble. Gives off to Erica. No good, but Erica with some nice fight keeps it alive. And now the shot from outside, a whistle on the floor. The Andrews sisters do an extremely good job of catching that ball and keeping it above their head. They don't bring it down. They keep it chin high and above and, and finish the play. Putnam County with a couple sister acts, Erica Andrews and Tamika Andrews. They also have a cousin, Cassandra Andrews, and a couple of other twins with Chantel Reed and Michelle Reed. A couple twins out there as well. Like the whipple triplets that we had in the earlier game. The first shot that time by Tamika Andrews is up and in. She's got three points here in the first half. And 13, Amanda Newton, a 5'5 junior, will check in for the Lady Rebs. So let's see if they convert here on this free throw, if they jump into their 1-2-1-1 press. And if they do that, the what you want to do to look against that is you want to, when you enter the ball, look past back immediately. If that's covered, look middle or sideline and up you go. Here's a 1-2-1-1 press. Andrews with both that time, averaging 21 points the ball game and 12 rebounds, had 17 last night versus Loganville. And just like you said, Phil, a little bit of a press that time. Bannon able to break it. Kick it back out to Roxy Reed, who was set up top. Coach Farmer said before the game, he is going to attack their pressure. They're going to throw over the top and look to score. That's Newton looking inside. Oh, inside. Nice play. Cindy Williams, another basket. Nice left. She did a great job of using the rim to block the defensive man's hand. Putnam back on the other end. Sharika Tarkins will put up the jumper. Oh, he rattles in and out of there. Tarkins, though, with the hustle, gets the ball back. Puts up another one too strong. Taken down by Williams. The Lady Rebs, though, with the basketball, but being trapped in the backcourt. Ball knocked away, and it will go. It will stay with Bannon County. Here's a nice job. The give and go right inside. Now look at her take a drop step baseline. Use that left hand. She kept the ball away from the defense. Kept the ball you and the man formula kept her body between the defensive man and the ball. Super job. Putnam County now with the basketball again. The Lady Eagles averaging close to 79 points a game. Bannon County also likes to put some points on the board, but both teams do contrast, though. And there's a shot a little off the mark that time by Tamika Andrews, but the Lady Eagles hustle for it. Now Andrews once again too strong that time. Out of bounds, it'll go to Phantom. Fannin's doing a, a nice job of really making it tough on the offensive end for Putnam County. There's always a challenge shot. There's always a contested shot. They're bumping cutters. Fannin County with the basketball now. Oh, a near steal. And now we've got a jump ball called right around mid-court. Possession error will stay with the Lady Rebs. Two minutes, 21 seconds remaining here in the first half. And you see the score, 36-14. Lady Rebs with the basketball again, beating their first three opponents in the playoffs by a combined average of about 19 points, so they'll run it up on you. Looking inside. Oh, nice pass inside to Grice. Can't get it to go, though. Grice on the follow will knock it home. Roxy Reed, that, that whole thing was set up on her pass. She has a tremendous, tremendous floor vision. Putnam County on the drive that time will have a foul. You don't, you don't want to reach on defense. You want to play defense with your feet. you got to move. Bannon County plays a pretty good team defense. That's one of their strong points, and that's what creates their offense. Exactly. You've got Coach Farmer who's not real happy with that, 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 that Roxy Reed reached on that play. So now back at the free throw line once again is Tamika Andrews, and she buries the first. Now, if they can convert here on this second free throw, that gets them not only an offensive rhythm, but a defensive rhythm. Now you can set whatever press that you, that you choose to. Andrews makes good on the second. Oh, we can't have that. Oh, a steal that time. Not quite put down, though. Putnam trying to capitalize. Ball loose on the floor. I believe we're going to have a foul called. They're going to call that one, I believe, on number 24, Cindy Williams. You've got to be you've got to be strong with the basketball. You just don't just can't throw it up there and, and take things for granted. You got you have to concentrate. Now that we're up here 38 to 16, but Putnam, they're still coming at you. Now the Lady Eagles back at the free throw line. That's 
Sharika Tarpkins misses the first. And another foul on the floor. They seem to be kind of in a lull here. P Fannin County's lost a little bit of concentration with a minute 46 to go in the half. But, and of course, coming off an emotional victory last night in the semifinal game against Loganville, winning 41 to 38. Meanwhile, Fannin County had a little bit easier time against Dodge County, 53 to 38. Don't let that score fool you. It was a little misleading. That game was a very, very physical ball game, man. They, they were pasting each other with screens, banging the boards. That game took a lot out of them. Andrews knocks it down, and it's 38 to 18, a 20-point ball game. The Lady Rebs lead it with a minute 42 remaining in the first half. Again, Dave Garner along with Phil Hansen bringing you the Class AA Girls Championship. Back on the other end, Cindy Williams puts up the shot, no good, and now has it knocked away, but a foul called underneath. Putnam did a nice job of getting Fannin not to run their offense there. Right here she comes. She comes down. Now this is the shot they want them to take, even though they need to stop ball penetration because you don't want to give up a layup. But see now they weren't able to run any offense, get them in all that screen and meat grinder and picks, and, and that's the shot that they want you to take. Williams makes good on the first, a 5-9 junior. Her second attempt, too strong off the back of the iron there. And Renata Waller to bring it out for Putnam County. Putnam's oh. hanging around, Dave. A long jumper off the front of the rim, no good that time, taken away by Williams. Putnam is hanging around, Phil, now they got a little bit of a backcourt press going here. Ooh, and near, oh, and now there is a turnover that time, and now it is Sharika Tarpkins off to the races, lays it up and in. That's a four-point play, Dave, the two that you didn't get here on the offensive end, then they come down and convert on, that, on their offensive end. 39 to 20 with 60 seconds to play in the second quarter. Fannin County looking ahead, now driving inside. Oh, a nice dish inside the Grice that time, lays it up, but it's going to be an offensive foul. Even though there was a turnover there, Paris did a nice job of slowing it down, driving at a defender, drive, draw, and dish, and pass to the open man. Lady Eagles trying to put together somewhat of a run here right before the half. Shot that time, no good. Lady Ward is fighting for it, will reset. Now a three-point shot from outside is good. They're back in it, they're right back in it. Sharika Tarpkins. Again, being able to convert on the offensive end has led this, because now Putnam's been able to employ their defensive pressure. 39-23 with 26 seconds left here in the second quarter. Ooh, look at the four quarters here, Dave. That's Melissa Flowers. Now over to Grice. Grice going baseline, looking to get rid of it, picks it back out. Nice help by Tamika. Roxy Reed. Oh, inside has it knocked away. What a defensive play by Putnam County. And then the Lady Eagles on the run. They lay it up. Oh, too strong. The follow, though, is up and in by Tarkins. And that is going to do it for the first half as Putnam County went on a run there the last couple minutes, Bill. 39 to 25. Fannin County still with the lead, but the momentum switching to the Lady Eagle side. Definitely, Dave. Fannin had him right where they wanted him. Had him on the ropes, about to knock him out, and then they got a little lackadaisical and kind of forgot what got them the big lead in the first place. Started taking quick shots. The pressure now of Putnam has had this effect. Let's go to Lisa. Thanks, I'm with Coach Johnny Farmer. Now, your team's doing really good. They're shooting great for three-point land, but what do you tell them at halftime to keep their heads in the game and well, keep playing strong? Yeah, we've got to keep playing strong. We've got to keep them off the glass. we got to get a little help. Uh, you know, they can out jump us everything. We're boxing out. We're not getting much help with the um, zebras out there. So, I mean, you know, it's not their fault. But, I mean, we, we got to play, make them play basketball, and they're coming down just taking it at us right now. We've got to get, get them off the boards. we got to get settled down and, and control the uh, control the, pre uh, the pressure and to stop, uh, stop their press. They're pressing us right now, and it's hurting us. So we're going to work on that at halftime. Thanks, Coach. Johnny Farmer, of course, in his 19th season as the head coach of the Fannin County Lady Rebels. We'll take a time out and be right back. The Class AA Girls Championship from Macon. All right, thanks, Jim. Dave Garner, along with Phil Hanson, bringing you all the action. Phil, as we get ready to start the second half, what are going to be the keys? For Putnam County, offensive conversion. They must complete the chippies down low. They've got to keep getting Erica and Tamika Andrews touches, and guard penetration from Parkins and Waller is a key. Putnam County down 39-25, to but had a spectacular run at the end of the first half to get back in it, and there they had another shot. Chantel Reed right off the bat. we got a ball game here, Dave. Putnam County believes. Bennett County back on the other end being pressed now by the Lady War Eagles. 
Rebels able to break it there momentarily. That's Stacy Paris doing the dribble. And, oh, and she gets hammered inside. Foul that time on Chantel Reed. That's a nice job by Coach Farmer to make that adjustment the second, in the second half. Here comes Paris. She's taking the ball north and south. That's what they stopped doing there at the, at the end of the first half. They kept going east and west, but Putnam's pressure had a lot to do with that. Paris hits the first free throw. She's got 17 points tonight. Four three-pointers in the first half for Paris as well. Putnam County's pressure last night in the in the semifinal game against Loganville. Did a, they did a nice job of extending the Loganville offense. Eddie Ward goes back with the attack. Reed puts up a shot that time a little off the mark. And now Fannin County will go back at it. That is Melissa Flowers with the basketball. She'll push ahead. Roxy Reed, 4-3, buries it. That's a big-time shot. You're going to live and die by that jumper. She hit a huge shot in the semifinal game against Loganville. Roxy Reed averaging just five points, but creates a lot of points. And that's her three-point shot there. Now right back on the other end, it is the Lady Wurgles attacking. Fannin County has got to find a way to turn Parkins. She's going north and south with the basketball and penetrating too low into their defense. Parkins with 13 points. Bryce inside will kick it back out. And now a travel that time going to be called on Stacy Paris. There we get a look at some of the first half stats. Field goal percentage, when you get a look at it, uh, 83%, that's, that's incredible. I don't think they could shoot 83% in the gym by themselves. <laughs> that's unbelievable, and the fact that Putnam is still hanging right here in this ball game. Due to the fact that through the defensive pressure and rebounding has kept Putnam close. Sharika Tarkin with a nice steal and a layup to go with it. She's turning up the defensive tens intensity. She is the quarterback of this club. 15 points tonight for Tarkin. She's averaging about 16 a game. And now Paris back to the other end has it knocked away. And they're going to call a foul on Reed. The Putnam fans don't like that one. Reed felt she got all ball. Well, that's a tough call. But if Paris would have jump stopped and made the pass to Grice, that's an easy two on the other end. Paris will go to the free throw line. Her club leading by 13. And Paris knocks home the first one. This is what I mean here in this replay. When she's coming down the floor, if she jump stops right there and makes the pass over to Tina Grice, who's out of your camera, unfortunately, that's a layup. Stacy Paris nearing the 20-point mark. And hits it with that free throw. Big players come to play in big games, Dave. Now back to the other end. Ooh. Tough pass that time. Now Andrews from outside can't quite get it to go, but up underneath an excellent position. Lady Warriors, though, they can't get it to go. Still fighting for it in there. Oh, Dave, I got, he goes in there. you've got a feeling that this is not the style that Fannin County wants to play. It's tit for tat. They're going back and forth, up and down. They want to, Fannin County wants to get you in that meat grinder where they can press you a little bit. Melissa Flowers with the basket that time. Let's go ahead and check in with the Triple A boys game. Let's send it on over now to the Coliseum. Phil and Dwayne, take it away. Last Double A girls championship. We got a heck of a ball game here, Phil. 57 to 51, what was a large Fannin lead in the first half has all of a sudden become rather short as Putnam has went on a big run. You're exactly right, Dave. Sharika Tarkins has single-handedly put this team on her back. And again, uh, right now, of course, the Lady Eagles can cut it to a five-point ball game. They missed the opportunity there. So far, though, Fannin County, of course, is the team that's used to championships as they, of course, won the Class AA championship back in 93. They also had a title in 95. Putnam County, many folks thought weren't even going to get here. As you see, the put back there by Andrews, an impressive one. The pressure and the, and the defensive and offensive rebounding. Putnam County is starting to win the Battle of the Glass. Now we're back on the other end. Fannin County. On the attack, the Lady Rebs. You can't beat pressure, Dave. Putnam County has done an outstanding job of turning this game totally around. And now, just like that, it's a four-point ball game. Putnam County, Lady Eagles trying to strike. A minute 14 from outside this time. No good by Tarpkins. Nice rebound. And Rice gets the board. Put Fannin County's playing like they're behind. They, they, they have the lead. They have to play like they have the lead. They're getting all excited, running around here, kind of helter-skelter. Let's put Putnam in what got us there. Let's get them in the meat grinder. And just like you said, Phil, you know, Putnam's pretty much taking Fannin out of their ballgame. Now, Fannin's gone to a little tiger paw here. That's a double stack high. They're going to screen and have the bottom end of the stack pop out, trying to get a little continuity. Jackson Reed on the drive. Travel, and it'll go back the other way. They're, 
there again, the pressure here is just immense. The fans are into this game, and it is getting to be a lot of fun. Tell you what, 57-53, a four-point ball game here in the centerplex. Putnam County has really worked their way back into this ball game. And I tell you what, they're within a couple baskets of taking the lead here with 30 seconds remaining in the third. There again, Dave, Putnam County can just survey in the whole floor. You've got to get a little pressure, get them out of what they want to do here. Parkins is just sitting there surveying whatever she wants to do and just taking little jump shots. That shot a little too strong off the back of the iron there. The follow, though, is up and, ooh, not quite, though, as Michelle Reed tried to put that one home. And now we've got a foul. I believe we're going to call that one on Putnam. That's a tough foul. Rebounding, There's, you must find your man, establish contact, forward pivot, hold that contact, and go get the ball. Coach Crystal Wood over on the side checking things out. The team trailing by four with nine seconds remaining in the third. Fanning to play for the last shot. That's Nelson with the basketball over to Paris. Paris throws up the shot. She's fouled. It won't quite go, but will have an opportunity at the line. Even though there wasn't a turnover with Putnam's pressure there, it got Fanning County to shoot the shot they wanted them to shoot. A quick running one-hander, fading going towards the baseline. So now they weren't able to run any of their offensive sets and take one and done, and now Putnam is able to come back on the other way. Stacey Paris with five points last night against Dodge, 27 tonight in the championship game, make it 28. She's the emotional leader of this team. Midway in the third quarter when Putnam had their run, she said she grabbed everybody together and said, look, we're not having any more of this. She buries both of them. She's got 29 Ooh. points on the night. And now Putnam right back the other way. Oh, they lose the handle, and that'll be it for the third quarter play. 59-53, but we got a ball game, folks. We're going to take a timeout and be right back. From the Macon Coliseum and Convention Center, you're watching the high school championships on GPTV. Phil, this thing's starting to get heated up here. Sit back, folks. It's getting tight. Two minutes left in the ball game. 75-61. Fannin has opened up a 14-point lead over the last couple minutes, but Putnam still with a lot of fight left in him. is hanging right in there. It's a lot closer, actually, than the score is really indicated. Definitely, Dave. You want to stay out of those trapping areas, which are at the corners, because then they can use the sideline and the end line or the half-court line as a defender where one guy can be three or two can be four. Again, Roxy Reed now on the drive will kick it back outside. Fanning has become a little bit more patient over the last couple minutes as trying to get back into the ball game. And that time, Tamika Andrews with the foul. That's a great point, Dave, because that's what they were doing in the first half. They were being patient, passing, making the extra pass, cutting, getting some good man and ball movement. But they got away from that. But that was a lot to do with Putnam's pressure. They sped him up. Stacy Paris with 34 points tonight will be at the line. Okay, she is just having a tremendous ball game. Senior stepping up to the plate. 5'6 senior guard having the game of her life. She has now hit 35 points for the Lady Rebels. They're going to look into a foul situation here soon for Putnam. 15-point lead with 132 remaining. He knocks home another one. And now it looks like we're going to have a timeout on the floor. Both teams will talk things over. 132 remaining in the ball game. 77 to 61. The Fannin County Lady Rebels trying to win a state championship over the Putnam County Lady War Eagles, who were last year's Class A champions, jumping up a classification this year. And of course, it's been a heck of a ball game, Phil. And like we've talked about over the past couple minutes or so, Fannin County has really lived up to their reputation as a controlled defensive type team. And now they've been able to generate some points over the last three or four minutes of this ball game. And that's why they got the 16-point lead. They've showed a great deal of courage against the pressure here, as you said, in the last two or three, four or five minutes of coming to the ball instead of waiting for the ball to come to them, allowing the Putnam defenders to step in there and pick it off. They're stepping into the pass, turning into the def defensive man. Our congratulations do go out to Woodward Academy, Pope and Holy Innocence, the triple quad A and A state champion winners today, earlier on this evening in this very building. Nice defensive play by the Lady Rebels that time. There's a whistle. The ball will stay with Putnam, though, with 1.23 remaining. Putnam has two fools and 1.20 in the timeout situation. Here's the old Louisville play. They're going to line everybody up in a line at the free throw line and step somebody back. They'll inbound it. And the Lady Eagles with a shot a little short that time by Kashina Reed. And now the Rebels on the drive, and they'll call a the foul. And that one will be called on Reed. Fannin County has done a nice job in this run here to get this lead of rebounding. Like we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, if you want to win rings, you've got to control the battle of the glass. You've got to rebound. So Fannin County once again with an opportunity from the free throw line. That'll be Melissa Flowers, the 5'8 senior. She's in double figures tonight with 10 points. And the first one rattles out of there. 
With about three minutes to go in the game, Putnam was down nine, and they almost could sense like the top of the mountain. And they just pressed a little bit and got a little anxious and then fell off the truck. Flowers with 11 points, buries the second of two. It's 78-61, and now a three-point shot off the mark that time. Kick it ahead, Tarkins. kick it ahead, kick it ahead. And with the numbers, they'll slow it up, though. That's Nelson with it. Nice pass. To Roxy Reed. You don't need the points. You don't need the points. That charge that time on Reed. Nice defense by Andrews. Erica to draw the foul. You need a nice saddle dribble there. Pull it back out. Kick it back up. Make them chase you and foul you. Put you at the line. 60 seconds remaining in the girls class AA state championship. We're in Macon. Dave Garner along with Phil Hansen. The clock's not running, Dave. <laughs> Fell asleep for momentarily. That three-point shot off the mark by Putnam County. Clock rolling finally. And we've got a whistle on the floor. Once they get that rebound, the off guard must drop below the forwards or the whoever rebounded the ball's shoulder. And then when you get that rebound, turn to the outside, away from the defense and all the traffic. Kick it out and up you go. Putnam County defeating Mitchell, Baker, Mary Persons, Harris County, and Loganville along the way while Fannett County, of course, uh, defeated Monroe area in the first round, beat St. Pius Westminster, and then, of course, last night in the semis over Dodge County. And Stacey Paris will once again be at the free throw line. 36 points tonight. I have to say she is the MVP of the ballgame. <laughs> I'd have to say so. She has been something else. 5'6", senior, averaging 18 points a game basically throughout the season and is well over that tonight. This is a nice gesture here by Coach Woods taking out some of the seniors, bringing in some other people to get some recognition for an outstanding season. Cassandra Andrews, the cousin of the Andrews sisters, checks in the game, a 5'10 sophomore. Are you going to look at her? That's a class move by Coach Wood. A free throw. Oh, I just wouldn't quite get in that time for Paris. We'll have another opportunity. A couple player substitutions now. Amy Bundy and Cindy Williams. Our Fannin County check-in as Bryce and Nelson check out for the Lady Rebs. Well, senior-dominated teams, you can't teach, you can't overemphasize the, the ability to have experience. 38 points tonight by Stacy Paris. 46 seconds left. Andrews puts up the shot. Hits Tamika Andrews continues her game. 23 points tonight for Tamika. She's had a heck of a ball game. She loves that little wing jumper, Dave. Oh, she sure does. Well, they're emptying the benches on both sides, getting these youngsters a little bit of experience at the state final, which they can take into next season. Several uh, players checking the ball game here for both sides. He's doing wholesale changes. That's right. <laughs> That's Roxy Reed at the free throw line. 13 points last night against Dodge County. And she hits the shot there. She's got that wind-up jumper. Looks like Rachel Nicholson checking in for Fannie County along with Crystal Jeffers. And uh, Kawana Lawson checking in for Putnam County along with Melissa Lovejoy. You hate that either team would have to lose this contest. They really do. Both teams have really fought hard tonight. This will look like Putnam had a good run going, but really Fannin County started getting back into their game after being taken out of it. And that's attributed to their lead. Fannin was able to establish themselves back on the offensive glass and defensive glass, which was able to keep their lead extended and held. Shot a little short that time. And now we've got a whistle. Get a look. Number 13, Amanda Newton of uh, Fannin County. It will be number 20, Christina Reed at the line. And it rattles in and out of there on the front end. So Fannin will have the basketball and push ahead with 25 seconds left. The Lady Rebels of Blue Ridge, Georgia will be the Class AA Girls State Champions for the 1998-99 season, repeating what they did back in 93 as the AA champ. In Fannin County and coach Johnny Farmer in his 19th season. What a season this year for Fannin County and for Putnam as well as the final seconds run down here from the Macon Centerplex. Well, I just want to thank everybody at Georgia Public Television and partner. It's always fun working with you. It sure is. I appreciate it. Great game. The Fannin County Lady Rebels have done it. They have prevailed. 81 to 64, the final score. The Lady Rebs and coach Johnny Farmer over Putnam County and coach Crystal Wood.
hard-fought effort by the Lady War Eagles. Bennett County, though, with the victory. They got you. Got to love this, huh? I'll tell you what. Doesn't get any better. That's what it's all about, right there, Phil. is on for Fannin County as they will be presented with the championship trophy. And Coach Johnny Farmer in his 19th season. Let's throw it down to Lisa Weiss who's standing by with Coach Farmer. Johnny, you said the only thing these girls haven't won was a state title. You they got it now. They got it now. Happy. I'm happy for them. I'm really happy for them. They've worked hard for four years. I've had some of them start. Uh, Stacy's here as a freshman. Started, I mean, didn't start, but played a lot. Roxy's been our point guard. Tina Grass played well inside for us. She does a great job defense. She doesn't get credit for it. She comes to play every day in practice. If you look at her, she's got bruises all over her body. They definitely played a great game. Great, thank you. Thank you very much. We thought it was a little too many points for us. We didn't want it that high numbers, but hey, we kept coming at it. State champions, Class AA, they win 81 to 64 over Putnam County. We'll take a time out and be right back with more championship basketball on GPTV. All right, congratulations to the Lady Rebels, winners over the War Eagles of Putnam County. Johnny Farmer, 102 and 9. All right, let's go with to our own John.